Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this edition of Sermon Notes. Uh, I'm here with uh, Pastor Jared Burt, uh, youth minister and mili- military minister Matt Statler, and I'm Kyle Shipp, the adult minister here at Taylor's Valley. Um, we're here to kind of talk a little bit about uh, yesterday's sermon, uh, talking about uh, Hevel and absurdity, um, and, and with some real life uh, experiences going on with <laughs> starting our first stream a couple of minutes ago, and, <laughs> and uh, we do our sound check and everything's good, and and then I start talking, and my batteries are dead immediately. Hevel. Um, talk, Hevel. Talk about absurdity, huh? Hevel. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Well, uh, um, first thing I want to I kind of ask you, how did you come to this? You know, going to the book of Ecclesiastes, starting in 1-2, um, what was your thinking in, in, in kind of being led to this point and, and, and where you wanted to go with, with this sermon series? Well, I'd never been through Ecclesiastes, and so that intrigued never me. Read. I wanted to, and uh, and... You know, the way it starts is pretty uh, different than a lot of other books. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And, uh, and I felt like we needed some more practical, uh, you know, uh, teaching and preaching. Uh, we'd gone through the Gospel of Mark and really looked at the life of Jesus. A lot of great yeah, stuff there, practical. obviously. A lot of practical stuff there as well. Yeah. Uh, is your microphone on as well? I'm just whispering. Under okay, my, you're I'm just whispering under my letter. breath. All right, there you go. Um, so anyway, I just felt like some practical wisdom would be good and helpful for the congregation. It, and honestly, uh, this studying for this first message has helped me in my own personal life, uh, you know, find more contentment. And I'm honestly kind of shocked uh, by it, uh, but it really has benefited just uh, the peace that I have in my heart. On a daily basis, and uh, the contentment, and uh, just you know, applying some of this wisdom and some of these truths from Ecclesiastes, and so that's why I was even more excited by the time Sunday rolled around, and share that with the congregation. So yeah, it was I, I enjoyed it, um, and and one of the things that I enjoyed the most is kind of your play off of, of Ecclesiastes and Proverbs, and and the way those because you, you said it, you said Proverbs is. Uh, X plus Y brings about Z, right. um, and Ecclesiastes is X plus Y brings about cheeseburger. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, you know that, no that, it, or it, yeah, that yeah. doesn't always make sense. Uh, um, and and I enjoyed the way that that you kind of looked at that and kind of played with that. There was a couple of things that I wanted to, to ask you though, um, maybe for a little bit uh, to to expand upon a little bit. You, you had two quotes, and I, I kind of want to take them one at a time. Uh, your first quote was you said, "Don't let your theology." Cloud your honesty. Do me a favor. Explain that just a little bit, because I thought you, it, it was great, and I enjoyed it. I wrote it down, but I want to make sure that we talked about it a little bit. It's tweetable. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, and th- this is something that, honestly, I struggle with, because I've got all this theology, and sometimes, honestly, it keeps me from actually experiencing what's really going on right in front of me. You know, I, I love being able to, through Scripture, kind of be pulled up above the fray, and above the forest, and to see things from the perspective of heaven. I love that about scripture and about theology. That gets you through a lot of dark days. But there is just a lot of stuff in life that honestly is ridiculous. And, you know, when you're going through something ridiculous, uh, sometimes the last thing you need is a theologian saying, well, you know, but if you look at this from the perspective of heaven, everything's going to work out. Jesus is risen from the dead, and and he's reigning, and he's... All of that's true, and all of that's important, uh, but sometimes I think that theology can keep us from being honest in the moment that, yeah, actually this this is absurd. This is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, so sometimes I tend to err on the side of being overly theological in a moment when, you know, actually, no, th- this is ridiculous and, and absurd. And so we don't want to have such a concept in our mind of theology that it, keeps us from living life and experiencing life in that moment and calling a spade a spade. And my wife helps me with that. She's very much a Proverbs kind of woman. She's, you plug X in, you plug Y in, in, you get you get Z, okay? <laughs> and uh, so, uh, which I think honestly is probably 80 to 90% of life. Uh, we go through life and if you function a certain way, you live in a certain way, you can expect a certain outcome. My problem is sometimes I put in a W and a pink giraffe and I still want to get Z, you know, and, uh, and that's just not the way that most of life functions. But, you know, Ecclesiastes takes into account that, you know, th- there's a lot of smoke, there's a lot of fog in life, and, 
Uh, you're not always going to understand everything, and sometimes you, you, you're going to wake up, things are going to be rough that day, there's going to be a lot of ridiculousness that goes on, and that, that's the world we live in. Let's not wake up and be shocked every single day that that is the world that we live in. Uh, but yeah, but that quote uh, just uh, has to do mainly with, uh, let's, let's be real with people, and let's not uh, be some, you know, seminary student wandering around, I can say that because both of y'all are seminary students, I'm not, uh, with this pie-in-the-sky understanding of the way the world really works. It's refreshing because he just comes out and says it's vanity. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. So I like that about him. Well, it does. It, it, it's, you, know, you mentioned it in the sermon. You mentioned it just now um, that we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be surprised that, that this... This doesn't always make sense that things don't always line up the way that they're supposed to. Um, you used a couple of different examples. Uh, um, one was kind of humorous and, and, and a couple were real life. But, but that you, you shouldn't wake up in the morning and go, hey, wait a minute. What, what's going on here? This is absolutely ridiculous. Right, right. Um, that, that, that we should almost, uh, I, I don't know if expect is the way to go about it. Because I think if, ex- if we talk about expecting it, that, that, that uh, then we go through our day looking for the, the ridiculous and the absurd. Right. But, well, I, th- I think expect probably is a good word because you wake up and you say, you know what, probably today 70, 80, 90 percent uh, of the times I do X and Y, I can expect Z to happen. But I can also expect that there's going to be that 10 to 20 percent cloud in my day that just makes absolutely no sense. It's absurd. It's, it seems pointless. I don't understand it. And okay, you know, let, let's not be shocked that that's there. Let's expect it. And let's embrace it and let's deal with it. You know, I'm not saying let's just act like let's not deal with it. I'm saying uh, that it's going to be there. Let's deal with it. But let's not be blown over by it every single day when that 10 to 15 percent happens. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to milk that those five, 10 minutes of our day for the rest of the day rather than just dealing with it and moving on. So. Yeah, you know, and so what you talked about, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes kind of being separate. Well, you know, Proverbs has similar things, I think, um, but Ecclesiastes really helps clarify, I think, Proverbs. Right, And so, let me just make sure this is loud enough. I can hear you. Everybody else can hear me. Online, we've cut your microphone off. Probably probably wise. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so the Proverbs, it says, you know, treat don't answer a fool according to his folly. And then the next, like, the next one over, the next Proverbs is like, um, answer a fool according to, you know, and you're like, wait a minute, what, what, what do you mean, don't, and then and yes, and, and so I think a lot of it's um, circumstances, you know, we, at certain times, you need to answer a fool, and certain times, you don't answer a fool, sure. and I think um, Ecclesiastes really brings it out, um, you know, things aren't always just as cut and dry as, like you said, X, Y equals Z, or sure. A or B or whatever it is that you're trying to yeah, put in there. I, I didn't do well in the <laughs> kind of math portion some, of the uh, the sermon yesterday. Edward so. thought you were hilarious the yeah. whole time. <laughs> he's like, he's so funny. <laughs> he's the one that said Z. Yeah, Z. <laughs> oh, we do stopped you, talking. Do you have, do you have anything? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> sorry, we, we we were joking that everyone just stopped all sorry, at once. Sorry, so, no, that's okay. Um, it wasn't that funny. There was a, the, there's a second part to it. You, you split them up a little bit, but there's a second part to that that you said, don't let your feelings overrule your beliefs. You know, we were talking just a tad earlier that, um, that those two are kind of a play against it. Um, do I have something? There's a bug. Sorry, this, this showing is getting weird. All right. <laughs> there, was, uh, <laughs> there was a bug climbing. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, so we moved from don't let your theology uh, um, cloud your honesty to don't let your feelings overrule your beliefs. Talk a little bit about that. Mm. Well, that's kind of the flip side of the coin, and that is that, you know, when, okay, uh, when we do have those feelings that, hey, we're working hard, uh, we're doing everything that needs to be done, uh, but we're not getting the outcome, the result that we want. Uh, I've trained a child in the way he should go, and I'm getting something totally different than what I expected. Or, you know, I'm working hard at my job and I'm getting uh, all of this, these difficulties. Just, uh, I, I'm being faithful and I'm getting all this pushback. You know, and so sometimes, obviously, that leads to having certain feelings and emotions. And that's when, you know, you don't let those feelings override your beliefs that, okay, first, this is the kind of world that we're living in. That's an important truth for us to wake up to every day. And, uh, you know, Jesus has, has the victory at the cross. He sympathizes with me in my weakness. He died, suffered and died on the cross. So he understands going through 
uh, abandonment, betrayal, uh, hatred, all of that sort of stuff. But he also rose from the dead. He's the exalted Savior and Lord over all creation. And so that theology should uh, also influence my feelings. So they, they go together, but sometimes some people have a tendency to err on one side, some on the other side, and there's got to be a balance there. There really does. And, uh, you know, as I open the message with, um, these books are answering the question, what kind of world are we living in and how to live well in this world as it is right now? And uh, we just have to be honest that, you know, like I gave the illustration of a boxer when he goes into the ring, he's not shocked that people are throwing punches at him. It's just expected, that, and he's prepared for it, and you roll with the punches. You, you go with it. You don't act shocked and appalled and get all angry and upset. You know? Now, if somebody on the street starts swinging at you and throwing punches, that might lead to anger and being frantic and all that sort of stuff, but in a boxing ring, you understand that that's where you are. And so understanding the world that we're in influences how we're going to live within that world. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you talk about that, that you often um, lean towards the theology. You have a lot of that theology in your mind. Uh, it's interesting because I tend to be the opposite. I tend to be the person that, um, that, that, I, uh, that I, have to, um, I have to fight that, that, that allowing my feelings to overrule what it is that I know to be right. true and what I know sure. to be for sure. Um, you know, you, you said it just a couple minutes ago about that, that there are times that will allow that 5 or 10% of the times that life is absurd and ridiculous to uh, overrule the other 90% of the yeah. day that's going on. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so then we have a small portion of our day that basically just blows up the rest of our day, blows yeah. up what's going on when, when we should. We should go, you know what? This is going to happen sometimes. And we take it, we roll with the punches, and we move on. Right. Um, and I think that's something that some of us have to, have to really learn more so than others. You, know, you and I are very different. You, you, are, you are very even-keeled, go with the flow. You know, things don't, don't rock you and shake you as much as, as they do me. You know, something absurd happens, and, and I've got to kind of pull myself back to center because I'll be the guy that's you know, running around in circles pulling my hair out. Right, right. Yeah. You know, I think it was a Toby Mac meme, which normally I don't remember <laughs> memes, but he said, you know, don't, he said, you say you've had a bad day, he said, but maybe it was just a bad five minutes that you milked the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, how many times have I done that? How many times do we do that? We have an encounter with somebody, something goes the wrong way, and it just, it affects the rest of the day. And so, sometimes that's legitimate, but... But sometimes, you know, I think we have a tendency to let those feelings kind of carry us and guide us, and we kind of act shocked that, you know, somebody would say something to us at, at, at work or where, where, whatever happened. And uh, so I think we just have to be mindful of that, that we all face that same temptation, and, uh, but this is the world that we live in, so let's roll with it, let's deal with it, let's embrace the ridiculousness of life and move forward. And I think we can take it more than just the ridiculous portion because um, I'm thinking on even a grander scale. You know, we're talking about a bad day. Well, let's look at um, some of our veterans that come back with post-traumatic stress. Right. You know, General Mattis says, you know, Knife Hand Mattis says that this is um, it's post-traumatic growth. You know, and that's what we're coming, we need to come back with is growth because you, you face that situation and instead of dwelling on it continually over and over again, use it as, a, as an opportunity for growth. And I think, um, you know, in our days, in, in the morning, you know, you mess up or you make a mistake, use it as a chance for growth and say, you know what, I think God's showing me a lesson here that, you know, my life isn't just milk and, and cereal, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it fell over and I'm upset, you know, right. and I want to kill my kids now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, that escalated quickly. But, you know, but we, have a, we, we, um, we can grow from our circumstances, and, I, and no matter how bad those circumstances are and how, um, how painful. And so I think, and just another quick thing, of something I talk about with the youth is the length of eternity and what it looks like. I mean, we, we focus so much on five minutes of a bad day, you know, and then you look back and the next day it's like, well, that wasn't a big deal. Just like if you remember your first crush, you know, you were like really, really wanted them to like you and you really... And you said something dumb, and you felt, you know, stupid. Well, I look back now, and I'm like, that doesn't, that means, doesn't means nothing. Yeah. You know, but that could have wrecked, you know, a whole month of my school time, right? Because I was so dwelt on that. And so I think um, it's just grounding us in the fact that, you know, things are going to go, and they're going to come. And really, it's, 
It's not something that we need to be like, this is the most important thing I've ever done in my life, but that is hevel, it's passing. It's, you know, our lives yeah. are but vapors. Right. And yeah. in eternity, we're, gonna, we're not going to have, we're going to sit back and look, you know, a thousand million years from now and be like, well, I don't even, you know, <laughs> that was not a big deal. You know, and sometimes we just, we take the opposite of the attack. Yeah, and, you know, he, he draws out certain situations in life in Ecclesiastes. You know, he gives, mm. you know, example, And that, that's why I like this kind of wisdom. We, we are, we're huge about loving tweets and clever, pithy sayings, and we're, we're drown to that. But, um, oh, there, Mom, Hevel, Hevel, Hevel. <laughs> um, and I don't know if they can hear me now, but, um, but when that happens, uh, you know, we have a tendency to... Oh, excuse me. Okay, let me, let me back up. My yeah, mind yeah. threw me off. Um, we are attracted to these pithy statements, but what I like about Ecclesiastes and what's refreshing, this is life experimentation. Yeah. This is waking up and just reflecting on the way our days go, on the way that life runs, and realizing, okay, this is the way it is. Sometimes the righteous are going to be treated as the wicked, sometimes the wicked are going to be treated as the righteous. It's not right, not fair. Now let's deal with it rather than spending our life dwelling on it and acting shocked by it. Let's deal with it and embrace it and move forward. So, well, I like you know because you, Matt, you packed you packed a, a whole a whole group's <laughs> worth of, of talking into to about thirty seconds. But you you talk about dealing with it and moving on and and yeah, you know, I loved how you were talking about. Learning from some of these things that, that, that we do, we take, we take those five minutes and we, we allow it to ruin our day. We, you know, we allow um, saying something dumb to our, our crush. Yeah. Um, and, and now that my wife is actually watching, I say something dumb to my, yeah. my wife every day and it doesn't bother me anymore. Sure. So she's used to it. But, well, at least um, we'll get one like on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yep, that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, but, but, but learning and growing and, and dealing with it and using them as opportunities as opposed to using them as opportunities to allow our life to just be revolved around this one instant, this one moment. Right. Um, you know, when we talk about heaven, and, and we talk about, you know, you, you talked about the kind of three aspects, you know, about the absurd, the pointless, and the fleeting. Um, and, and we go back to probably the most, the, the, the most epic case of heaven of all time in the fact that, that, that throughout Jesus' life, he was constantly mm-hmm. attacked. He was, he was constantly uh, criticized by the, 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 those that, that dealt in the law uh, even though he was the one that, that, that made the law, right. um, and, and then was hung on a cross. Uh, and, and I think that's the thing, is, is that, that in these instances of Hevel, in these instances of looking at, at, at some of this, um, that we do have to remember that, that it's not unprecedented for this to happen, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so, you know, as I was going through this and preparing for this, I was so attracted to the life of Jesus, because mm-hmm. especially when you read John 19, and, you know, it seems like the world is against him. And it's Pilate who the passage says is afraid. You know, he's got this crowd saying, no, if you don't do this, we're saying you're no friend of Caesar's. Jesus knew what his mission was. And he knew what he was supposed to do. And he knew that, okay, I'm going to do this. And this is probably going to be the response of the world. They're going to hate me. They're going to hate those who follow me. Okay, that, that, that's it. He, he was resigned to that fact in a sense, and he accepted it, and he embraced it, and accepted that mission from God, whereas Pilate, on the other hand, he just, you know, was, it, he seemed very flustered that, okay, I feel like I'm doing the right thing, and man, I'm still getting this reaction from the crowds, what do I do? And so, I'm just so attracted to the contentment, and the peace, and the power of Jesus in a moment of such upheaval to, and such, you know, condemnation to so powerfully be able to look at Pilate and say, you know, you'd have no authority over me if it were not for my father who gave it to you. And for me, you know, I'm probably never going to be crucified, certainly not in the same way (laughs) Jesus is. I'm going to go out on a limb with that one. But, um, But man, some of the things I'm going to go through either today or this week or this month, I want that kind of strength, inner strength, peace, contentment that he had yeah. to endure through st- stuff like that. And I think, I mean, I think pointing to Christ, of course, is the only way that we can even understand. I mean, we, that's the only worldview that we can really grasp. But you know what? Bad thing happened. That's just a little bit of life. You know, instead, if we, if we didn't have Christ and we only had this life, 
it could be a big deal. It could be yeah. life. But I think what it kind of encourages me is, is to, to be able to humble myself and ask for forgiveness in certain circumstances. Because if this life was all that there was, why should I care if I say sorry to someone that I may Shouldn't. never? Yeah. No, but now, because I know I'm going to be in eternity with some of these people, you know, and they may have hurt me or I may have hurt them, you know what? Let me humble myself. You know, let, me, let me sacrifice myself you know, on the, on, for the greater good, and just as Christ did. I mean, because Christ understood that more completely than we will ever understand. Right. Um, and it just, I don't know, I, just, I loved how you tied Christ into this, um, into Ecclesiastes, and I never looked at it that way before, but it just, it blew my mind in the fact that, yeah, Jesus really did approach life, I mean, from an Ecclesiast, ecclesiastical yeah. kind yeah. of a point of view, Good right? Word, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he really did, yeah, and uh, went through, and I think it was in John where it says that he knew, he knows what is in man, yeah. and so he knows that sometimes you're going to do X and Y, and people are going to respond with something other than Z, and, uh, but you know, one of the things Ecclesiastes is doing, he's deconstructing, the teacher's deconstructing the ways that we think we might find meaning or purpose apart from God, and he's ultimately saying it, it really is vanity if, you know, there's no divine revelation from God. There's no reason for us to think that anything in life would have meaning or prayer. So one of the things we're going to talk about in the weeks to come is, okay, let's just imagine that God is not in the picture for a moment. Let's just imagine the unimaginable, that God's not in the picture. Life really is absurd in an ultimate sense. You know, when I say that life is absurd, I'm not speaking in an ultimate sense that there is no meaning, there's no purpose, and, and it really is short. I'm saying in human experience, you know, this is the way it's going to seem to us in that moment that really subjectively it's going to be ridiculous. But objectively, in an ultimate sense, in a final sense, Life is not absurd. Life is not pointless. It's not short. We have eternal life. We are created with meaning and purpose in the image of God. We have intrinsic worth and value. And so that's one of the things I'm looking forward to exploring. But he's deconstructing all the ways that we would find meaning and purpose apart from God. And were it not for divine revelation, we'd have no reason to think that this life means anything or that we have any purpose whatsoever. Well, and it's, a, it's an attack on the worldview of today. You know, the worldview that we have today is you only find meaning if it's meaningful to you, right? That's just your truth. This is my truth. You know, whereas Ecclesiastes is almost like that, but then it's like it's not really. You know, there's, a, there's an attack on the thought that, you know, this life is, is only important to the individual, Right. right? No, it's actually there is an important. Everything else is vanity. All your all your little trinkets, all the you know, all the lo- the hours you spend in line waiting for the new iPhone. Guess what? There's another one coming out next year. And guess what? Before that, there was another device that was right. even cooler. You it's know, never going to satisfy. For all yeah, for all of eternity, this is what's going to happen. So yeah, strive after that win. See how it you know see how it yeah. lasts. Well, and I loved uh, you know getting the uh, Jim Carrey quote in there mm, because yeah. I. I just happened to see that uh, at the end of this past week where he basically is saying exactly what Ecclesiastes. Of course, now I have yeah. no reason to believe that Jim Carrey of, you know, the, uh, uh, what movies has he been in? You know, Truman, The Truman Show. Uh, wh- wh- which one? Uh, liar, Liar, the one I Dumb and Dumber. I mean, Dr. Doolittle. No, the one I, the animal <laughs> detective one. The animal detective. Ace Ventura. Oh, Ace that, Ventura. That's what I was that's Yeah, what I love Ace Ventura. Of. Okay, so, yeah, helped him. so I grew up trying to imitate that. But anyway, <laughs> you know, here's this guy, and I have no reason to believe he's ever read Ecclesiastes, and basically just says the exact thing in this interview as he's reflecting on life. You know, a lot of times we're so hectic that we don't really just take time to sit and listen and think, and it seems like he's taken time to do that. And kind of t- putting God out of the picture, he's looked at life and basically said, nothing. It's, it's nothing. There's no reason as far as I'm concerned. It's just about playing with form. Mm. And, you know, on the one hand, it's tragic. On the other hand, it's powerful, I believe, secular evidence of the truthfulness of Ecclesiastes. That, yeah, you know, if you just sit back and think of it, from a subjective standpoint, if there's no God, 
yeah, this is, there's nothing. It's really just absurd. We're here today. We're gone tomorrow. What difference does it make? You just can't make sense of history or life. You can't. No. No. Well, and it's, it, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm enjoying about our conversation at the moment is, is we continue to move towards the practical. Um, you know, as I go through this and I listen, I'm just letting you guys talk because, you know, when, when we begin to talk about dealing with these circumstances, you know, you guys, I've come to both of you to talk about this before because um, you guys are both so much better at this than I am. And, 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 and so the first, you know, as I put this in, I'm, and I'm going down the checklist in my head, I, you know, number one, we talk about expecting it, like you said, is that this is going to happen and, and, and that we have to expect it. And so I think as we begin to look at that for people that, that, that listen to this, that listen to your sermon and said, okay, I... I want to be better at this. I want to be better at not allowing my feelings to overrule my beliefs, of not allowing my, my world to come crashing down around me when 10 minutes of a day is bad. Um, it is that, that, yeah, one is, is to expect it. And, and two, is, as I hear it, two is to, to make sure that I'm not at the center of my own universe, mm. that, that my universe is centered around God. It's not centered around me. Yeah, and, and a key part of that is realizing that we're not sovereign and in control and we're not intended to be sovereign and in control of the situation. There's just going to be certain things that are out of our control. So we hold things in life loosely. We accept them as, okay, that's part of the world. You know, I told my kids to put their PJs on, to brush their teeth, to go to bed. They're running down 31st Street right now, okay, (laughs) in a cape. And so there's just stuff in life that you do what's right, but then you hold the outcome loosely. You plant, you water, you let God grow it, and he is the one who is sovereign and in control. We have to accept that certain things are out of our control, so we hold them loosely. So anyway, that goes along with being in the center of the universe. And, and, that's, and that's fantastic. You're right about holding it loosely because I will. I, I'll admit, I mean, I'm one of those that, that when, I, when I do X and Y and, and Z doesn't happen, it, it's not that I say, okay, you know, this is, this is part of it. It's, it's that, that I look for how, where do I add something? Where, where do I add W in there so that way I can make sure that Z yeah, happens? right. Yeah, we, we try to white knuckle it and force yeah. it to fit the outcome that we want. And I honestly thought, you know, I said early in the program, my wife has more of a Proverbs kind of wisdom. And I thought when I started this, I had more of an Ecclesiastes kind. I think I'm somewhere roughly, maybe there's not a wisdom book for me, I don't know. (laughs) But I realized in this past week that I try to white knuckle the outcome of situations, regardless as to whether I did X or Y, to try to sovereignly control the outcome of situations just by finite or force or whatever. And, and that just leads to a ton of discontent. I've been more content over the past seven days than I've been in a long time because I've just realized, oh, you know, hevel, ridiculous. Right there. Well, it, you know, as a parent, to me, this is it's probably one of the most freeing things is to, you know what? I, you know, I can try as hard as I can to control the wills of my children. You know, I can try to break them, right. you know, but I don't have to. Right. You know, I can show them the right way. I can enforce discipline, but if, I don't have to get upset. Right. And I, I think that's the hardest thing for me initially was they disobey me, they're getting punished, you know, just like you would an adult. But remembering, you know what, their minds aren't working the same way. You know, they, I said clean up the room. So they picked up, you know, three toys, and they thought they were done, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you have to understand that, you know what, that's part of life. And, and that's going to take a little bit longer. I got kids in my season right now. You know, Sunday, my kids did not want to be at church for some reason. And I, that really angers me as a dad because, you know, they're going to worship God whether they like it or not. You know, and, and so, you know, so being able to hold him, you know, in service and just kind of talk to him and show him why, you know, why we're doing it, was a great opportunity for me. If I had just sat there and got angry about the five minutes, you know, earlier, I wouldn't have had that opportunity to really show him, you know what, this is why we worship, you know. Right. And, and of course, with disciplining children anyway, it's, it's more about instruction yes. than punishment. It's really not about punishment at all. It's about educating them in the way they should go. And so, and knowing full well that that's going to mean that, okay, we're going to set things up for them, and then they're going to go a different direction. And the goal you know, isn't moral, moral uh, conformity. It's, yeah, and especially in public, you know, yeah. sometimes we our parenting is more concerned about how that makes me look, how yes. that makes yep. the parent look, than about actually doing what's right by way of yeah. the child. And uh, and that's something that I think you learn. But but man, this is a huge 
truth for yeah. contentment in terms oh, of, man. okay, I did X, Y, didn't get what I wanted. Okay, let's let's roll with it. Let's continue to do what is right. Let's yeah. continue to do to be faithful. We're, we're not saying that you know there's going to be absurdity and ridiculousness in life anyway, so it doesn't matter what you do. No, it means that continue to be faithful, but just yeah. know that there's going to be this cloud, this fog of stuff that happens. And just be okay with it. Just continue to do X and Y and leave the outcome to God. Verse, you know, verse 12, be joyful and do good as long as you live. Verse 12, where? Where are you reading out of that? Um, in your Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Sorry, oh, I, don't, okay. I don't know how I got there. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 12, it says, I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure yeah. in all this world. You know, if you just... You take a break from all your expectations sometimes as a, as a parent. You can get a lot of joy of just having your children. You know, sometimes it's okay to laugh and play in the grocery store. Yeah. You know, sometimes you want to get in there and get out. Um, Sarah's trying to say something. I just got distracted. Well, and and we, we may actually have to, come, we may have to come back to Sarah next week, or hopefully she'll, hopefully she'll join us. Maybe, maybe she'll keep coming back to see you, I guess. Um, because yeah, we, yeah, we are, yeah. in, 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 in uh, touching on your third and, and final point from Sunday, uh, the fleeting embrace the shortness of life, uh, we're actually out of time. Um, yeah, and, and I want to make sure that people understand that we're talking about, you know, a secret to contentment in life. And this yeah. week was only like one part of that. So, and I, I think just that having that one part is, has helped me tremendously over the course of the last seven to ten days. But... Adding these other pieces in, I think, is going to be a game changer for a lot of people. So, so life I, I, isn't meaningless. What? Are we? In, is that how we're ending this? Life is meaningless and, that's, and there's no hope? S- subjectively, a lot of stuff seems mm. meaningless. Okay. And, and, and feels and perhaps in a subjective sense is ridiculous in that moment, sure. absurd in that moment. But then we're going to add some other layers onto it. That yeah kind of change the picture. And, and, and there's the cliffhanger, layers coming. Uh, so thank you for joining us on our, our discussion uh, on the very first sermon in, in our study on Ecclesiastes. Looking forward to the next several. Please join us on Sunday uh, uh, to, to hear Brother Jared preach. You can also find it on Facebook Live. Uh, and then we'll be back here at 1030 next Monday. So have a great week and uh, we'll see you soon. Great job, guys. Knuckles. <laughs> Knuckles. I know. Hey, Knuckles, Knuckles, come on. Daryl's trying to say something to you. I know.